in Abe's room, it looked like there were some from last mo or last unit still. Mm -hmm. In the lower left hand corner. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I get all of them then. have on my phone I took pictures of their whiteboards when they were doing the QR focus um, not just the sticky notes because I wanted to keep all of them just because I think this unit what I want to do is as we look at evidence I want them to pull like I want to have questions from their bank available and pull those as formatives to mm. see what they're um, able to answer and how they're answering it just to kind of get an insight into their brains. So when you were going around and looking at their poster or uh, their whiteboards, were you noticing questions that weren't just, why did oxygen go up? Yeah, because I had them um, hypothesis. So like I pulled this morning when I created the document that we used, I um, was using the patterns card to pull que reflection questions okay. so that they were individually looking at the data before they discussed it. So they went through those questions on their own first? Because mm -hmm. I wanted everybody to generate ideas. So I- And then you had them ask questions? Uh-huh. Okay. So I had them- um, Okay. So I had them, um, in order to analyze the data, I had them look for patterns. So what patterns do you observe in this phenomenon? What relationships between the patterns do you observe? So in case they saw like, like that that interplay between like, a lot of them notice interplay between oxygen and nitrogen that they always did the opposite things. Okay. And then what might cause these patterns? So to try to get them to pull out what did they already know about like these time periods? So that's why some of these say right. dinosaurs yes. question mark. Well, and that's actually like I just saw one that I'm. I'm glad we did that because it says, did the dinosaur's extinction affect Earth's atmosphere? Which is mm -hmm. that interplay between the biosphere and the atmosphere. Right, yeah, this is so, the one that says dinosaurs. Yeah, I know. <laughs> There's a um, Okay, and then I also was noticing um, something about, not just why are these elements the way they are, but uh, it was more like the elements that we just talked about in the formation and heating down, heating up and cooling down. But they yeah. were, they were trying to hypothesize mm -hmm. why this happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cause somebody else asked like, are they, are they aging? Is it aging over time? So they're wondering, like, are the are the gases in the atmosphere aging over time, and that's why they're disappearing? Because they're like breaking down, and getting older, kind of a thing. Is that what that question's asking? I think so, because he talked me through it. But the majority of them are just about why does oxygen go down then back up? Yeah, so I'm classifying that as just patterns mm -hmm. of up and down. Yeah. Fluctuation. And, uh, that's a better word. Yeah. <laughs> why, why do we see this fluctuation in the gases of the atmosphere? Which is perfect because that gets us to our stability and change cross-cutting concept. Right. And a ton about the oxygen, how it suddenly appeared. Like they were asking all about why wasn't there any oxygen before and then all of a sudden it's at this time era. Okay, so that's important. Mm -hmm. They also notice a dramatic decrease in hydrogen helium. Yes. 
And they also noticed that nitrogen was like always present in every time era. And I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that's a. I'm glad they noticed that. That was one thing that I didn't notice until I did this. Yeah. When I color coded them, I'm like, oh. Well, so I, after them, like making the mis, like thinking that it was an empty bar, I mentioned that the gray is nitrogen, and I got a lot more of people like referencing it after that. Yeah. So, so like here, this is definitely an advanced one because they're saying, why are nitrogen and oxygen connected? Mm -hmm. Like they're noticing that relationship of fluctuation. When one goes up, the other goes down. Yeah, and then this is misleading because one of them says, why is there only oxygen, nitrogen in present time? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the oxygen. Oh, definitely yeah. honing in on that. Yeah, and then where do those new ones come from? Mm -hmm. Why are there only these, yep. and where, where do the new ones come from? Yep. This one's a good overarching one. How does the air change all the time? More of the process. Mm -hmm. Could the elements combining cause this? Yeah, because fusion. I'm sure that's where they're coming from with that. Yeah. Like, because I heard somebody go, well, maybe they, like, those hydrogen helions came together and made the oxygen. Well, of course they think that based right. on what they've learned. <laughs> This one's okay. Did the di did dinosaurs exhale carbon dioxide? They started the hole in the ozone layer. Oh, I wonder if that's because so originally, a lot of the advanced ones didn't even look at the time frame for this, like they just saw these patterns and so then when I asked them to hypothesize why they'd see this they were hypothesizing that humans caused the nitrogen levels to go so high and I said okay did anybody look at their scale of time here <laughs> I said well and this is misleading <laughs> because a million years ago yeah, yeah a billion years ago but um yeah they just hadn't even paid attention at the time scale so I wonder if that's where that stemmed from, was that, like, okay, well, if humans didn't do this, then what living creatures could have? The dinosaurs! Like, yeah. <laughs> I like the way this question is worded. Why, did why didn't oxygen come to the Earth until four billion mm. years ago? Or a million. Oh, I see that one. There's that's what that is. I don't know what it says under that. She come into Earth till four billion years ago. Yeah. I think those are the only trends I'm seeing. Yeah, and then, you know, I mean, the overarching. Yeah, what, what would what cause this pattern? Mm -hmm. I like That's though, exactly what we're going to figure out. I think, though, I like this, the sudden 
upspike in oxygen, the sudden decrease of other things, like, because they also mentioned the sudden decrease of, like, ammonia and methane. So just why sudden increases, why sudden decreases, why fluctuations of others, up, down, up, down, up, down. I think those would be the big ideas. Okay, so then the question is, like, at the beginning, when we're looking at this, mm -hmm. do we go in and address each one of these changes? And that's where we find our two, like our evidence for that? I think so. Or do we like look at this first part and that's how we connect it to what they've already been learning? That the earth was still forming? Mm hmm And then can they make sense of that on their own? That that would make sense that there's a lot of hydrogen and helium and we start to see water. Or not water. Our water. Our water. Okay, so it's either look at each each component individually or look at it in time frames. I think it's going to be more important to look at it in time frames in order to see that interplay between the different spheres. Because if that's what we're getting at is that stability and change component, I think that's the way to approach it. So then when we look at it in chunks, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll focus in on Will that drive what we're trying to find for evidence? Oh yeah, because like we'll be able to get specific evidence. Well, d is there a specific evidence for ter like this escape velocity for hydrogen helium? Like, do we have direct? Uh, well, we know how massive it would have to be in order for us to keep hydrogen mm. and helium. Okay. And then we probably, we do have evidence for, and I don't know why that happens. I think this is going to be an ice cores. Um, that we have evidence of it decreasing. But then I do think, why? I think also we're going to have evidence in rock layers of ash because a lot of, you see heavy volcanic activity in rock layers when there's level layers of ash that has been compressed. So if you have, like you see the methane and ammonia in the ice core at this time and the ash coincides with that, you know that's volcanic activity. So if I'm seeing no ash later on, I know there's less volcanic activity. So that's why the methane and ammonia went down. Is that where the ammonia is coming from? I think so. Now, if you have ammonia... I don't know. Though. So ammonia, the reaction for it though, as it decomposes, it produces nitrogen mm. and hydrogen. And, it, and is the nitrogen staying in our atmosphere because it's heavier? How oh, it could be. And it's inert. I mean, it's not going to react. It's with very anything. non reactive. I think that's why it's probably the most prevalent, is because it's so unreactive. So it's not going to oxidize and weather things. It's not going to. But is that why? we start to see. I don't know. I mean, that would that's what we need to figure sense. out. Here, let me start making a list of what we need to figure out. Bye, Emma. Okay. So, we need, so the, yeah, so this is volcano. So the reason we've got all this here. So we need to see ash, an ice core. And at this time we don't have life yet. It's still too hot. Yeah. So it's still unstable. Yeah. So it hasn't cooled down enough for water to con to condense. Which is so now I mean we have water present just because of the meteors. So we need to have meteor. Or do we right. say... Because this is the water here, right? So we have a little bit of water. Are you guys missing something? Yeah. Let me... Oh, she left the water. Okay. So I've got... Okay, we need evidence of... Like the mass needed to keep hydrogen helium. We need evidence from volcanic activity of volcanic activity. 
So do we approach this like, all right, these are the gases that are in the air. How We need evidence to say that we know it's here? Sure, that would be ice core dot, I think. And then, I keep thinking this is water, this isn't water, this no. is water. Yeah. <laughs> should have color coded it different. <laughs> so we see hydrogen helium decrease. Yep, got that. But it makes sense that it was there because we have formation. Yeah, because and it's hot. Big bang. That would have been the most prevalent thing at the time, right? And then um, we've got methane ammonia. So we need to have volcanoes yep. to say that. Yep. Okay. Then we've got water is on the up yep. because of bombardment. Mm -hmm. And so what we need though is we need evidence that the meteors brought water. Yep. Which so would our be the card, crystals. Yep. We already have. Okay, and then um, carbon dioxide is going up because of volcanic activity as well. Wait a second then. Why do we see... Because this is... Why would these be going down and carbon dioxide be going up if... Hmm. Well, this is cooling down. Hydrogen and helium are escaping our atmosphere because yeah. we just can't keep them. But the methane and ammonia. That's why I don't know if that's from just volcanoes. Okay, because it could come from a different source, possibly. Well, and if the methane is converting to nitrogen, yeah, we see a rise in nitrogen. Which would make sense, so the volcanoes could be pumping it out, but if it's converting, then...
Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, research from 1998. <laughs> um, Carnegie Institute. Put it in perspective of the universe. And that's not very well. No, okay, yeah. but it does say that um, the most likely sites for ammonia production to occur were in the early Earth's crust and in hydrothermal vents where iron-bearing mm -hmm. minerals acted as catalysts. Using iron sulfides, they found that at 500 degrees Celsius, up to 89% of the nitrogen converted to ammonia within 15 minutes. Iron oxide converted to 46 percent of the ni converted up to 46 of the nitrogen percent to ammonia. The salt converted up to 20 percent under the conditions. Reduction of nitrogen, the largest reservoir of nitrogen on Earth, was slower but still resulted in ammonia. Okay, so volcano produces it. So volcanoes are producing the nitrogen. And the nitrogen in the high temperatures seems to be converting to ammonia. Yeah, so that, I mean, that's still, so we still have hot. Being right. The reason. Yep. And that's why it goes down is because it's cooling down. And so the ammonia is, the nitrogen is not converting to ammonia anymore. Right. And okay. so then it's being released as nitrogen. Yes. Yep. Because it's not hot enough. Exactly. Okay. That so makes sense. So we understand that. Yep. And then the methane is just carbon and hydrogen. So now, uh, so our hydrogen helium goes down because it's hot. Hydrogen and helium can't mm -hmm. stay within the atmosphere. Right. They're moving too fast. They're yep. leaving. So the so the key here is that it's hot. Yes. That's why a lot of this is happening. And the CO two is increasing because of volcanoes. Right. So volcanic activity is the main cause. Temperature is the main cause, and meteor bombardment. Yes. Those are the three key things there. I wonder what, so we probably, for a transition component, we probably need, we probably need evidence of temperature change. Because okay. we need evidence of volcanic activity, meteor bombardment, and temperature change, right? I'd say those, would be, and then we need the connection of the hydrogen helium. Okay, can we though, like, kind of do the next chunk yeah. first? Yep. Before, before we, we start diving into it, because I feel like th this is more evidence than I originally anticipated, because you've got to have evidence that of this idea, evidence here, here. Yeah, so is temperature. this. Is this a you give this information to the kids? I think they so. just read that little snippet. Yeah. And then they can conclude, okay, that's what happened to this. So yeah. now we've taken care of that gas. Yeah. So we're trying to make sense of these gases. Mm -hmm. I think so. I think some of these, so like, should we decide which one or two gases we really want to focus on overall? I guess that they'll dictate itself because that ends yeah, up with the oxygen. Okay. Aren't present. Right. Okay. So then the next chunk would probably be this, right? Yeah. Is it the natural lines from here to here? I think, yeah, I think to there. Because then this is just a fluctuation. Like we can make sense. Why is this stable? Why are these fluctuating? That could be the ending chunk. But do we need, are there key events that we need to make sure that we're honing in on? The only ones, so according to the standard, the so this has to be snowball, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. And coniferous, is that what's going on here? I 
for is that that's oxygen uptick. Mm -hmm. It's not, I don't know, I don't, we'll have to look because it's either going to be algae, because we need to look at the time frame. It's either going to be algae for that time frame or it's going to be the coniferous period for that time frame. So we just need to look at what date. Like, how early did the algae come in? their production, plants on land, their production, because this could be plants on land, you know, so I don't know time frame wise. Uh, it's two seven, so. Okay, so what did you ask? Key things we need to focus Key on? Key things that we need to make like sure. Like event wise? Yeah. Plants. How do you do it? Photosynthetic organisms creating free oxygen. Evolution of animals because of that oxygen. Um, weathering, oxidation because of oxygen. So it's really just the key of photosynthesis and the results of that. Well, the production of oxygen. Mm -hmm. And oxygen being identified in iron bands, mm -hmm. and because we have oxygen present, we have mammals. That well, we have like the Cambrian explosion, like animal life. Yeah, so that's the focus for the standard. But then, don't you think you also need to have a snowball Earth present? I do to say. Well, if we get these too much on a whack, and mm -hmm. we have too much of this. Yes. That's the stability and change component. Yeah. Well, because that mentions the feedback mechanisms. I think, yeah, I think the majority of our time needs to be spent in this fluctuation component okay. because that's the feedback cycles right there, and that's what we really need to hit on with the stability and change. Okay. So then this chunk here, we have... Decrease in water, yeah, because it's cooling down. Yep, cooling down, so it's now raining and condensing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Our ammonia, methane are still decreasing. Nitrogen's increasing, so the same idea. It's cooling down. Therefore, our nitrogen is going to the air instead of having methane. Yep, so still, so continued. I'm sorry, not methane, ammonia. So this is continued down here for the same reason, okay? Yep, so water. And then CO2 is decreasing because we have less volcanic activity. That's our assumption, yep. 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 So. So that's just So we just need fossil this. records. Or not fossil records, um, soil records of ash. Yep. Ice core. Yep. So it's really the same it's thing. It's the same type of We're stuff. We're just seeing it change. The now. one thing, though, is going to be the evidence for the rain and the formation of oceans, which we could also get from rock layers because, like, that's when limestone and sandstone would have been made okay. from the. So that's the only new piece of evidence, really, I feel like would be needed. Because we could carry over temperature, so hot to cold. Yep. Yep, because temperature, we can give them temperature data for that change. So really it's the same in these first two chunks. Yep. It's just the extreme change. Which is perfect for how things change. Constructing a switch, so like that interplay between Or stability change? I mean, I feel like it's just change. There's right. No sti right. But I think that's important for them to identify, like, this is a time of change, and oh, here's why. Yep. Yeah. And then this is more a time of, this is more a time of stability <laughs> because it's trying to balance itself out. It's trying to. It's trying to be stable. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, because this was just so active and so yes. crazy. Okay, 
So then our final chunk is all about photosynthesis and oxidation and snowball and animals mm -hmm. and animal presence. So we see this continued decrease in carbon dioxide. Now it's just really low. Which is going to be super misleading. Yeah, I know because, and that's hard because they've already been saying that from seventh grade, they've already been saying like, plants give off oxygen, we give off carbon dioxide, like, you know, so they're already thinking that. But maybe this is, uh, yeah, that's going to be mean tough. Because, what do you mean, expand on what that comment from seventh grade? Because they said they even, even today they were trying to make sense of why the carbon, like they were able to hypothesize why the oxygen was going up because they're like, well, there might be a ton of plants. Like, what if, what if plants didn't exist back here, but they do here, and that's why there's so much oxygen. And then some were like, well, then why is the CO2 going down? Because animals would have been breathing out CO2, and the animals would have been there too. So why aren't we seeing CO2? I mean, they're making. Uh, that's not misconception. No, but I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> like. I feel like those are valid questions, and I don't know why... Well, animals weren't here yet. Right, but then why don't we see an uptick in carbon dioxide here? Yeah. I mean, that is super tiny. Mm-hmm. Because I would almost expect the carbon dioxide and the oxygen to be doing this. Yeah, but remember, so much of our carbon that we have is trapped in the earth. Oh, dissolved in the oceans. I forgot about that part. Dissolved in oceans as animals okay. die so our well that's going to be so it's carbon sinks basically yeah so that's going to be that that's the first thing we need to hit then so the carbon dioxide stays down because of these carbon sinks which is really leading into your next unit uh-huh yep i've been thinking about that so much like this is really hard to separate that yeah It'd be really interesting to see this whole course flipped. Oh yeah, that would be interesting. Well, because, and I, I also feel like rate has so much to do with this though. Because like this is taking how long to do versus our increase in carbon dioxide has been what, 50 years, right? So, yeah, that would on this Hawaii graph, data. right? On our this graph, that would look like a flat line mm -hmm. at this time scale. So I feel like it's still that scale component that we really need to hit hard with climate. Yeah, because they're going to see this and be like, "Well, what the heck?" Well, and it's still just 0.04 percent of our atmosphere. Uh huh. Yeah, but and then and then it's that idea of those feedback systems that you have this interplay between multiple systems and so if you have a change in one that unbalances others and that's why it has such a big effect not just because of that one thing but well, because of its can we, domino effect. Can we focus in then on CO2 data here and the fact that even though it's decreased, even though it's cooling down, I mean when we're saying cooling, it's still super hot. Yeah, yeah. With the CO2? I mean, that's a lot of CO2 in the air. But there was no oxygen. Right. To kind of cool interact, right. So it was... Right, that's like, that's, that's an unsustainable... Like, that does not sustain life, that kind of level. Yeah, and that's why we didn't have any. Mm -hmm. Until it got cool enough. Okay, we're kind of getting off track. Yeah. Um, so the CO2 decreases and stays down because of these carbon sinks. So I think that there is probably going to be data in ocean rock, I'm assuming. Did you see that article ocean? that I sent you on carbon today? Oh, no, I did not. Yeah. It just came out. <laughs> but it was all about carbon. And okay. it's overkill. I mean, it 
Okay. Because it goes into like calculations kids can do on where the carbon is actually present. Yeah. But it might give you a place. Some good evidence though. Yeah. All right, so then the other thing we're seeing this oxygen rise. So we need to look at this time frame. This time frame is from, okay, 2,500 million years ago. Well, not to this website, this Earth How. That's yeah. this whole chunk. That's what this is all about. Okay, so that's the cyanobacteria. But that's also, well, Snowball Earth would still be with the cyanobacteria. Is this, what's the time frame? Uh, yeah, right here, there, there, yeah. Yep, that's this. Okay, good deal. So, the things contributing to this would be the first organisms so, photosynthesizing in the ocean, plus the snowball earth, which allows oxygen buildup in the oceans, which is going to lead to the Cambrian explosion. Okay. okay. So cyanobacteria. So this is when that like so fossils are going to be important here. This is where the iron bands and rock come in. That's not what I'm doing. So it has to be on you. So thank you for working with her though. And the oxidation. So then does it... Okay, so here's another play too. Yeah. So once the oxygen starts to go up, mm -hmm. any methane that is still in the atmosphere mm -hmm. is producing CO2. But that doesn't necessarily correlate here. I don't I even that's... see any oxygen. I was going to say, I think that's a little too in-depth as well. So I know this Does that go on to explain the decrease in nitrogen at all? Yeah, okay, so there's the Cambrian explosion. So that's 541 to 245, so that's the decrease we see. doesn't talk about nitrogen though. Okay, but it, that is the oxygen component, right? So this is when, there it is, the carboniferous, so the, this is, happened though. Why? Oh, it was an asteroid. Oh. So that would lead to the huge decrease in oxygen then. Because if that blocks out the sun, then we don't have photosynthesis. So do we have to, do we want to look at the five mass extinctions because of that stability change? I think so because that might better get them to the claim for life affecting earth and earth affecting life. Like, because if we... So there was an outside thing. Yeah. But as soon as it hit, that changed the physical planet, because now our atmosphere is convoluted with dust. Okay. So now Earth impacts life. Right. And because there isn't life... Now it cools down substantially. Or wait. Yeah. It cooled... Yeah. It cooled down, right? Well... When we're looking at extinctions, though, it's not just asteroid. Right, because there's, so there's no snowball Earth, yeah, which would snowballs. That is the cold. Volcanic eruptions.
So I think I need to look at those five. Mm -hmm. I think then if we do that, that's what we ask the patterns question around. Like, looking at these different spheres, biosphere, geosphere, atmosphere, what pattern do you notice? They should be able to get to this teeter-totter effect, I think. Yeah. You know when she puts this stuff in here for you and she makes new that's work that she's doing, going out of her way to try to make Okay. I need to get kids. Okay. Um, I'm gonna where are we here? So I think, I'm gonna, can I photocopy this for you? I don't even yeah. know if this will photocopy. But this is the scribblings of all the like evidence and kind of events and things. So you could scan it and just send it to me because that should just take a picture of it. Perfect, yeah. So then um, I think the next step is to start actually building these pieces of evidence on like mini manipulatives or something that they can actually like if I print this out big, you know, or this out big, they should be able to like put them side by side. So when you say mini, do we have something card-esque and then have a picture that represents it? I was thinking something like this big that has a little image to associate in their brains and just then explains the evidence itself. Unless it's something we don't have evidence for, like this hydrogen helium escape, then we just give them that information. Yeah, I think they can get to that, don't you? I do. Just with well, where we're at here. So that's prior knowledge, what's been going on. And they could literally like place one at a time. Like we could just give them the first one. They could place it, they could argue you know, about where they placed it and why, move on to the next one. So it's a continue, like, argue from evidence kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. um, or if that gets too slow for them, like the first day we could do that, and then the next day we could just give them, now that you've had a feel for it, we're going to have you do five, you know, four now. Well, and, and like, I think it changes it based does. on the chunks that we yeah. have. I think Probably. this one, yes, because this is an explanation of this phenomena that happens, right. this escape velocity. Well, if we know that these guys are super, super fast, mm -hmm. what can you infer from that then? So you're going to argue that if we know the speed mm -hmm. at which hydrogen and helium move, and especially when it's really hot, mm -hmm. what can that tell us about it present in our atmosphere? What would be hard? So I think we'd almost have to do that first because then if we bring in the fact that it's cooling down, mm -hmm. Well, then, would these slow down, and wouldn't they just stay? Oh, yeah. So it but just... But it doesn't, just because of how tiny they are. Right. Ever. Like, now, even. Right. Well, and is that where the mass comes in? Because you said there needs to be a certain mass to keep them in the atmosphere, so... Because we don't have enough gravitational pull. Right. And that's why all of the helium that we have on Earth is mined. Oh, okay. And we're, we actually have a helium shortage. Well, right. Well, so that, but then I feel like if you, because they wouldn't ask the question of why don't we have any today if they recognize that, that we just don't have the mass to keep it, like we don't have enough gravity to keep these tiny little particles. Yeah. There's they wouldn't even have to know that they're super hot and moving around, I guess. Right, exactly. But that, they gets, might us know to that, high, that gets us to the temperature component, though. Okay, scan that. Scanning. And then I'm going to start creating like a fresh document um, to do these like mini card component okay. things, these manipulatives. 